morning, everyone. Looks like we have our XCOM folks at the table. I'm going to get us started. If that's all right, I'll call us to order here. Bring up the agenda, too. So I'm going to call to order the executive committee meeting. I'm Joe Semino, the administrative commissioner for New Jersey, current chair of, of the commission. Uh, so it is my honor to start us off today. We'll go through uh, approval of the agenda. Is there any items that folks feel that need to be edited or added to our agenda today? I'm not seeing anything. I will make note that we uh, we don't have the uh, minutes to uh, approve for the January meeting, so we will we will double that up our, at our next round and send that out to everyone. With that, I'll turn it over. Uh, well, sorry, I'll, I'll move into um, any items that if, if the public wants to make a comment on anything that is not on the agenda, they can do that now. Not seeing anything. Nothing online. Okay. All seven folks online are being quiet. <laughs> so, so we're moving right along. So we're going to go into our review of our uh, fiscal year budget. And I'm not sure if I'm, Laura, am I turning that over to you or to Dan? Okay, so Dan, so um, we we have a motion that came out of committee and I'll turn it over to Dan O'Kiernan, who's the chair of that committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The budget was distributed to the executive committee uh, members and well, the administrative oversight committee met yesterday and talked about it in, in some detail. And on behalf of the administrative oversight committee, I move to accept the fiscal year 2025 budget. Does that need a second, Joe? No, no. Coming out of committee, it does not need a second. Uh, hopefully folks have had a chance to, to take a look at that. So I'll, I will open that up for discussion or any questions that uh, that folks on the committee may have. Go ahead, Pat. That's good timing. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to thank Laura for uh, an excellent budget. Uh, uh, as always, um, the fiduciary responsibility that the commission has, um, as far as I'm concerned, it's outstanding. We, we do have some challenging lines. Um, there was brief conversations yesterday as it pertains to um, annual dues um, and discussions around the indirect. Um, and uh, I just wanted to voice my support for a small percentage uh, increase of indirect uh, to ensure that we have available funds for these unforeseen costs that we have pop up on occasion. Um, and Worst case scenario, we don't spend them. We we can move them to rainy day fund. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Pat. Uh, um, you know, I, I think a lot of us around the table have realized that more and more um, this commission's ability to handle <laughs> their financial responsibilities has turned into just more financial responsibilities. <laughs> I think you know, Spud has said it many times that. That, that we have been moving more and more money through, and and that's and that's you know a fact of uh, this commission's life. Um, I, I'm proud of the work that they're doing, but you know a lot of us uh, are dealing with contractors and and state universities and stuff that that are taking well over 50% overhead, and you know here at the commission they they do their level best to keep that at one percent or so <laughs> on, on many items. Uh, so the idea that, that they will take more overhead and um, just use that money to to assist them, e even if they've been able to manage without it, I think is is absolutely more than fair. And I, I agree, Pat. I, 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 I fully approve of that. And I um, unless anyone objects, that's something I, I think that the commission can consider and 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 keep us informed on on how they move forward with that. Um, and then, if there's anything else on the budget, or, or should I say, if there's any objections to the the motion at hand, not seeing any, then we'll we'll approve our fiscal year budget. Thank you. And legislative update, we're going to Alex. So Alexander, see you over there. So give us that. Legislative update, please. Good morning, everyone. I'll provide a brief update on the legislative activities of Congress recently. Um, 
to be frank, there's not a ton to update you on in terms of their activities. Um, very little has been introduced since the last time I spoke to you. We're still waiting on drafts from Representative Huffman's office uh, for the Magnus and Stevens Act reauthorization bill that they plan to introduce. And we're still waiting on a draft of Representative Graves' MREP response bill. Um, budget hearings for the Department of Commerce and the Department of Interior uh, are coming up. Um, I'll be paying attention to those once they uh, are on the Hill. Um, and our appropriations requests have been submitted to uh, offices up and down the coast. Um, a outline of those requests is attached in supplemental materials. We have three new appropriations requests this year. Um, one is for an industry-based trawl survey pilot program for $3 million um, to study um, kind of an alternative or a survey to work in conjunction with uh, the Bigelow um, to serve as a backup um, for when it goes into dry dock. Another appropriation request that is new this year is funding to complete the work outlined in the VIMS Menhaden report that was discussed by Pat yesterday. Um, we're asking for $2.7 million. We've gotten some really good responses to that request, both from offices on the Hill and to outside groups. Um, there's a letter with a long list of supporters, including ASA, the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation, um, Teddy Roosevelt Conservation Partnership, and about a dozen other organizations that are supporting this request. Um, and the final new request that was submitted this year is a CDS request to um, fund the retrofit of the Lady Lisa down in South Carolina. We asked for about a million dollars um, and have been working with Senator Graham's office um, for that request. That also has some supporters from outside organizations such as AFWA, the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies, and ASA. Um, the last thing that I'll briefly mention is NOAA's FY25 proposed budget cuts. They're proposing cutting uh, cooperative research partnerships by $10 million. Most of these reductions are coming from the Northeast, uh, Northeast Study Fleet, uh, and they'll be cutting approximately nine full-time positions from the Northeast Fisheries Science Center in support of that program. The other budget cut that they are considering is um, fully cutting Interjurisdictional Fisheries Act grants. Um, we've been having lots of meetings up on the Hill um, recently talking about both of these cuts and fighting against them. Um, and I think a lot of the offices that we've spoken to are sympathetic to why these programs are needed and understand that um, these are essential for our management program. And then the last thing I'll just quickly plug is that a lot of these offices are interested in having field meetings, seeing what uh, fisheries managers or natural resources agencies are doing in the field. Um, so if you guys would let me know about any programs, events coming up um, that I could share with congressional offices, that would be greatly appreciated. Great. Thanks so much, Alexander. And yeah, I mean, you know, the those directed cuts are seem pretty scary in, in my personal opinion. You're, you're talking about some programs that are just absolutely essential. Um, I, you know, I think that the support and just faith in um, the cooperative research stuff has has just been phenomenal. And 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 to think that that might disappear so quickly is is scary. And uh, you know, I, I think many states could attest to the importance of the IJ funds that. So I, I appreciate that. Are there any questions or comments on the legislative update? Go ahead, John. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Alexander. You said that Magnus and Stevens, they're bringing it up now at this point. So it essentially has no chance going anywhere right now, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, the idea from when we met with Huffman's office last time, which was a couple months ago, is that they would reintroduce their kind of Magnuson reauthorization bill with some amendments to it. Um, from the la it's, It would be essentially the same bill as their last effort, and that they would um, 
kind of be doing press tours and building up steam for another reintroduction effort in the next Congress. Can I just, yeah. And um, just curious, I know that RAWA is also kind of on hold and there was another almost competing bill that came up instead of that, that I thought had more momentum in the house. And is there any update on that? Um, no real update on Rawa or Westerman's Habitat Bill. Um, what our position is, we've been participating in the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agency kind of bi-weekly calls um, to discuss Rawa, to discuss Rawa strategy. And we're gonna be following the lead of the, the broader coalition in terms of advocacy, as long as it aligns with our fishery management goals. No, go ahead, Eric. Yeah, thank you very much. I am not on the executive committee, but I want to take the opportunity that uh, I want to thank Mr. Law. You know, he drags my butt up to the hill, which is a <laughs> probably a pretty scary task for him, as I'm sure you all can recognize. <laughs> so, but he's been a really good ally. He knows what's going on and he knows everybody, which is a really tremendous asset. And I really appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, he helps me do my job. So I just want to thank Thank Mr. Law and Bob. Thanks for having them. So appreciate it. Yeah, fully agree. Thank you so much, Alexander. Any other questions or comments? Go ahead, Pat. Alex, um, the the outline you've given us for the appropriations um, priorities is really great. Um, but I'm just curious if you've had any um, conversations with um, members or staff as it pertains to item number four, which is the industry-based fishery service, service pilot program and what uh, early responses have been to that. Yeah, so we've been meeting with offices primarily in the Northeast on this item, um, talking about the need for it. Um, you know, we passed the motion for NOAA to study this industry-based alternative to the Bigelow before they talked about the cuts to the cooperative research program. Um, and so it's it's really challenging to see them kind of reduce their cooperative research program, especially as we're trying to ramp it up. Um, but I think a lot of offices have an understanding especially when we show them the recent results and failures of the Bigelow itself, um, that there is a, there's, there's not a backup to the Bigelow that we can identify right now. Um, and this is kind of our, our fail safe. And I think a lot of offices are responding well to that. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that information. Um, and we've we've raised that um, as a priority uh, for Senator Collins. Um, and I think um, early indications have been good. But I just want to stress the the need for this particular program. These industry based surveys are critical. We can't rely on on Science Center uh, anymore for the big low. Uh, or any of their other platforms. Um, I think we've proven industry-based platforms are, uh, are are critical, and I just want to urge uh, this body to make sure that we continue to keep this as one of our highest priorities. Fully agree, and I appreciate you putting that on the record for us. Any other questions or comments on this? Go ahead, John. Sorry, man. I just, I just wanted to get a clarification. So this cut to the co-op, this is being done by NOAA. This is not a a budget action, a congressional action. Well, this is in the president's budget to cut the $10 million? Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that. Thanks. Yeah. So, I mean, it, you know, we, we've we seen similar items in the past that luckily disappear, you know, fully gutting. Well, to some extent, we've seen fully gutting NOAA as a, as a proposal, but um, Sea Grant, things like that. And, 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 and luckily, by when as all is said and done, you know, life remains pretty normal. And I, I certainly hope that's the case here. And again, I just appreciate all the work that Alexander's done, and Pat, for putting the importance of that on the record. Uh, any other questions or comments? No, not seeing any. So we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is the future annual meetings update. Uh, go to Laura. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this year, October 20th through 24th, I think, 
Yes, we'll be in Annapolis. <laughs> Lynn, do you want to say anything? Um, I, we are working on a fabulous meeting um, and we'll <laughs> enjoy having everybody in Annapolis. That's really all I have. Thank you. Details will be coming in August. Um, in 2025, we'll be in Delaware. John, how about the Screen Door Factory? Um, then, John, you want to say something? Uh, I would just say, I think, as you know, Laura, we've been discussing whether uh, to have it in Wilmington, which obviously is a thrilling people just to think of spending some time in Wilmington. But actually, the uh, riverfront in Wilmington has been vastly redone. It's beautiful. And it's very easy to get to by train. It's close to the Philly airport. Or we could have it down at the beaches, as we discussed, which is always nice. But, of course, it's not real convenient. What would you say, Roy? It's about an hour and a half, two hours from the Philly airport and yeah. same distance from Baltimore. So, um, so I mean, it would be uh, interesting to have it in uh, Wilmington. Plus, there would be great fishing for invasive catfish right outside the hotel. So. That's something else to look forward to if we did it there. Thank you, John. 2026 will be in Rhode Island. 2027 will be in South Carolina and 2028 in Massachusetts. That concludes my report. Well, thank you, Laura. I appreciate that. Um, always a pleasure. I think it's, you know, missing those during COVID was tough. Um, and it, it has been um, an absolute pleasure for me personally to to get to travel around and to host. I, um, I jumping from state to state, I had a chance to host a couple times there, and it was pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, so with that, um, we're going to move into a, a closed session. Um, we are doing the executive director's performance review. And um, as is tradition, XCOM will will take this up um, off the record 